don't sleep well, flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong, or maybe you just get lucky. Shit. No, no, it's not what it looks like, I swear. I... I wasn't going to hurt you, I... I just needed... well... blood. There, in the dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire, a slave to sanguine hunger. It's not what you think. I'm not some monster. I feed on animals, boars, deer, kobolds, whatever I can get. I'm just too slow right now. Too weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. happening your mind lurches reeling suddenly as if bitten his mind opens up revealing cracked and quivering memories at the heart you see dark eyes commanding you to feed you open your mouth and bite down not into a tender neck but into the twisting body of a rat the only thing your master lets you eat At best, I was sure you'd say no. More likely, you'd ram a stake through my ribs. No. I needed you to trust me. And you can trust me. Thank you. Do you think you could trust me just a little further? I only need a taste. I swear. Really? I... Of course. Not one drop more. Let's make ourselves comfortable, shall we? It's like a shard of ice into your neck. A quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches, your pulse quickens. You lean into him, losing yourself. You can feel your blood racing, coursing through both your bodies. A gentle, numb feeling starts to spread. just swept up in the moment. Hmm. But it worked. I feel good. Strong. Happy. But I didn't. And that's what matters. And look what you've gained. Together, we can take on the world. shouldn't take long. So many people need killing. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. This is a gift, you know. I won't forget it. You watch as he stalks towards the forest, stronger, more confident, ready to hunt.
Good morning. How do you feel? It'll pass. Just be glad I'm not a true vampire. A bite from them and you might wake up as a vampire spawn. Like my good self. All of a vampire's hunger, but few of their powers. Oh no, I should be cinders in this light. I hadn't seen the sun for 200 years before we crashed here. Someone, or something, wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Standing in the sun, wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. <laughs> You're such a sweetheart. I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. Hunting with vampires. Never thought I'd see the day. Very well, but I'm keeping an eye on you. And no wisecracks about having us for supper. Yeah. And I'm way too hot to touch. Quite the opposite. I'm here in the spirit of openness and honesty to work together as a team. I'd just better not wake with any holes in my neck. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. What's on your mind? We all have our burdens, one way or the other. Well met. It's said that anyone who bathes in the river of blood emerges as one born anew. It's a lot like that, I imagine. I feel the weight of these pawns on my head curling upwards like a mammoth's tusks. I feel these ridges snaking down my neck, not to mention a few bumps and prongs in unmentionable places. But I haven't seen my reflection just yet. Be my mirror. What do you see? <laughs> I can't tell if you're being silly or serious. I'll accept the flattery either way. I suppose I'll grow used to the new me, horns and all. The people will see a curiosity, maybe even a beast hungry for their souls. But I will slay their monsters, keep them safe. And one day they will see the Blade of Frontiers again. in my day a star, but never hunted a vampire. Just to remind you, I'm merely a spawn. It won't count. But if you want a true vampire, I'm happy to recommend one. Starion, how is the rat diet going? It may soon come to an end if you don't shut your mouth. I'm feeling a bit parched and peckish. Me too. Keep an eye out for any passing vagrants. I'm afraid you'll have to content yourself with vagrant chickens. Ah, stranger. Forgive the aroma. You catch a waft of something foul, metallic, and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. An old hunter's trick. Most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. You're a monster hunter. I'm surprised. I thought all girl were vagrant cutthroats. A 
are mystical and dangerous people. We travel the land, never settling in one place. We steal your chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters. Your friend here has heard it all, I'm sure. I wish I had half the power settled folk think my people possess. Alas, I am a simple wanderer. A simple wanderer and monster hunter. But I'm no witch doctor or cutthroat. Or to make a deal with her. <laughs> Probably think you can outfox the old dear. Right, but very wrong. My prey is a vampire spawn, much less impressive than the beast that lives here. His name is Astarian, but I fear he's gone to ground. I was hoping the hag of these lands could help me flush him out, but it seems she is no more. Not this time. My orders are to capture him. Oh. Uh, and bring him where, exactly? Baldur's Gate. My people wait for me there. May your road be kind. What new horrors waiting for us? Need something? I've already apologized. What more do you want? Unless you're... Looking for another nibble. No innocence. You have my word. Only villains that we need to kill anyway. After all, you know what I am now. I can fight with all my weapons. Teeth included. And if I happen to drain the occasional bandit during a fight, what's the harm? They're just as dead. As am I. I'm starting to feel a little peckish already. So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some knolls while stumbling around at night, and that's the last we hear from him. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Cazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven, and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. It was him, I'm sure. Only he would know to send the girl after me. It was a group of girl that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died had Cazador not appeared and saved me. Perhaps. He probably thought it was funny. But more likely, he's trying to send me a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, he can reach me. And he wants me back. Maybe he wants to make an example of me, to show what happens to runaways. Or maybe he thinks death is too good for me.
<laughs> safe? Do you think I'm safe? Do you know the power a vampire lord possesses? He can change shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. First, we have to... Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, if we kill his lackeys, he'll just send more. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. We can probably make an exception for Will. Probably. It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. People think the biggest threat to a vampire is a cleric with a stake. It's not. The biggest threat to a vampire is another vampire. They're scheming, paranoid, power-hungry beasts. So why would any vampire give up control over a spawn to create a competitor? Trust me, it doesn't happen. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. My condition is worsening again. I need to consume some powerful magic or it may become volatile. Thank you. Strange experience. Each time anew, I curl. Lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. Somehow the second artifact hasn't had the effect of the first. It's somewhat relieved the discomfort, but I fear my hunger hasn't quite. Ah! You do plenty for me, more than you realize. But this cannot be remedied. <clears throat> the magic isn't having the effect it should have. It's not like the last time, like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire. It merely drizzles. The embers still sizzle. The fire remains undefeated. I'm not certain what's going on, but nothing good. Please, I need to think. I need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think. Thank you for the artifact. A great deal of trouble it was, too. A great deal of trouble, indeed. Why are you here? I sent you to Zevlor. What? nose of yours has gone poking in our business. Mistress Ollerton, I can explain. Shh, shh. 
No need. It couldn't be helped. Koga! What is the meaning of this? You think yourself quite the spy, don't you? Go on, tell him. What's in the cloak word? Koga, have you lost your mind? Halsin is weak, Wrath. But in the shadows, we are strong. We are safe. There is no other way. You and Elsin welcome untouchables to your midst. You defile the grove for the sake of harmony. Oladon speaks truth. Who among you disagrees? Who would see this grove in ruin? The choice is made. Koga, burn the tainted away. Start with a snitch. As you say, Oladon. No. You... You don't know what you say. In Shadow, we are purified. You watch Korga closely. If she is moved by your plea, she gives no sign. When... When the darkest hour fell, it was us that brought light. Sylvanas demands we illuminate Shadow, not hide within it. How was I so blind? Careful, Koga. The shadows don't forgive. I belong to the shadows no longer. You've no power over me. You would question my power. Mother Earth, hear me. Grant me your wrath. Sylvanus' justice. If it's an argument you see first, you won't find it here. Whatever the Tree Father's judgment, I will accept it in full. You once called me a monster. Seems I've proven you right. I betrayed Sylvanus himself, led the circle to shadow. We will stop the right, and I will stand trial. My fate lies with the Tree Father. May he have mercy. We will grant them safe harbor until they depart. Meanwhile, help us contend with the goblins. Perhaps we can dissuade them from attacking. It began with a letter. There was no messenger, it simply appeared. Oladon came soon after. An army was coming, she said. Goblins, drow, and more still. Legions upon legions. The druids of Cloakwood knew the dangers this would bring. They ordained that all circles cast the right to shelter from the storm. Oladon taught me to harness the Tree Father's power to wall us in. In return... Well, you know the rest. I would turn the grove over to them. I won't forget the wounds I've inflicted. I pray Halsin returns to heal them in full. You have saved Korga from herself. I cannot thank you enough. Zevlo, by Delt's virtue, the Blade of Frontiers? What's happened, Will? I paid the price of angering the wrong devil. Believe me, I understand better than most. A moment passes as Zevlor contemplates Will's words. He then turns his attentions to you. I'm told the druids have stopped their damned chanting. What happened? 
truly. Ilmata's ashes. I never thought she would actually see reason. Thank you. We still have the goblins to contend with, but you've given us time to prepare. I need to ensure my people make the most of it. But here, left over from my soldiering days, it's sparse thanks for what you've done for us. And I'm afraid I have more yet to ask. You've bought us some time here, but the goblins are still massing out there. We'd need an army of our own to escort us safely to Baldur's Gate. And while I don't doubt your abilities, you're no army. There may be a way, though. Goblins are ill-disciplined. It's unlike them to organize so cleverly. Somebody must be leading them, bringing discipline to their ranks. Take out that leadership, and they'll scatter. It's no small thing to ask, but I've seen you fight. You're equal to the task. Everyone in this camp depends on it. Thank you. We'll be ready to leave as soon as you give word. No, sir. But if there's a clear path past those goblins, they'll find it. Yes. Of course. Something like a brisk stroll through the forest to get bigger at the spirit. I was just thinking the same thing, but less poetically. Without so much as a stirring from our tadpoles. <laughs> a girl could get used to this. Something's on my mind. I suppose you want to hear about Casador. I don't want to say a damned thing, but that won't do anyone any good. Casador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate, the patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. Not political power or military power, I mean power over people. The power to control them completely. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. He had me go out into Baldur's Gate to fetch him the most beautiful souls I could find. It was a fun little ritual of his. I'd bring them back and he'd ask if I wanted to dine with him. And if I said yes, he'd serve me a dead, putrid rat. Of course, if I said no, he'd have me flayed. Hard to say which was worse. Thank you. But this isn't about sympathy. It's about knowing what we might be up against. The Mind Flayers aren't the only monsters out there. They're not even the only ones hunting us. All I'm asking is that you keep your eyes open and watch out for anything lurking in the shadows. What more could I ask? Now, is that all? I would, but you have so many friends already. Excellent. Now that that's settled, lead on. Speak. I expect I am your first. Of course you haven't. They would have cut you from navel to neck. You are no less alien to me than I am to you. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. Decadent, then. Lacking in economy. Like so much of this world and its undisciplined people.
already feeling better. The goblins still infest the roads. As long as their leaders live, Zevlor's people are trapped. A possibility that's kept me awake countless nights. But I don't have a clue where to start, other than play her games and play by the rules. That's the only language devils listen to. There could well be. She has the blighted thing. What I know of it is simply what has engraved itself upon my memory. My contract is very clear. I can bring Mazora no harm. She'll have to let me out of my pact willingly. The only way out is if I can out-bargain her. We're standing here with nothing but the clothes on our backs and the worms in our heads. We can. I'm sure of it. How glad I am that you see me as more than my patron's pet. Fighting flies. Midges. Ugh. Shouldn't nature be beautiful and serene? It looks so nice in the upper city parts. Upper city, huh? Swish. Never spent much time there myself. I'll happily take you, if we survive this bug's banquet. Hmm. Sounds good. I've always been curious what a patriarchal looks like. My, my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps? The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that? Love. Was that? <laughs> they do know how to write them in Cormir, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Neither. The fox, rather. Hiding, in a word. A silent observer about to break the silence. Of course, what I have to say merits some privacy, as well as some more, let's call it, refinement. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There, middle of somewhere. I don't like this at all. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last. Call it a ninth sense. What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Fuck. A Cambion. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary. Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain.
Come now, why play hard to get when you're in deep over your tadpole head? One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. And what is madness but a denial of reality? Still, I have a feeling you'll change your mind before it's changed for you. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. That's what separates us from the devil, soldier. They think our greatest strength is a weakness. <laughs> I've always wondered what a laughing mind flayer sounds like. All those pretty little symptoms, sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. I can't believe that devil just took us into the hells with a snap of his fingers. If I see him again, I'll wring his neck. <sighs> I knew I liked you. Raphael was his name, right? He's trying to lure us into a game he knows we can't win. I'm not playing. Glad you're not either. The devil with the silver tongue. An old fairy tale my father read to me. The kind with a hero, a villain, and a moral. A farmer made a deal with the devil, so the story goes. In exchange for the farmer's dearest fruit, the devil granted him a bottomless coin purse. The farmer's dearest fruit, naturally, was no apple nor peach but his beloved daughter. We can learn a lot from fairy tales. Don't you think? Refuse him no matter how tempting the offer, no matter how delicious the feast he lays out for you. The cost's always too great. That's because you still have hope. But when he becomes your last hope, remember this. He'll require of you only what you're least ready to part with. And then require more still. You might think you'd give up anything for a cure. But the devil won't take just anything. He'll take everything. <laughs> now there's a bloody devil trailing after us. Well, this gets better and better. Shop around, he said. He seems sure we won't find anything. And he might be right. We've had no luck so far. Maybe. But all that, take your time, I'll wait, nonsense. He's playing with us. Casador liked to toy with people, too. Let them think there was hope right until the end. Until he snatched it all away. Creatures like them don't play games unless they know they can win.
Maybe. But he's not the only one spinning a web for us. This is no ordinary mind flare parasite. Who tampered with it and why? What do they have planned for us? And why are we important enough that a devil comes knocking on our door? If we find those answers, we might have a chance. Bloody hells. Literally. Just when I think I've got a grasp on our dilemma, a devil shows up. <sighs> no matter. We've dealt with every other oddity thrown at us lately. We can handle this one too. Now, as for this Raphael, he knows our secret. He claims he can help. What do you make of him? No doubts at all. He seemed powerful and very knowledgeable about our problem. Not the worst prospect we've stumbled across. As long as you can look past what he is. Anticipation. She is testing me somehow. About Raphael. Actually, yes, you're right. Very intuitive. Clearly the devil was trying to sow doubt among us. He's clever. My order uses the same tactic when dealing with enemies of Shah. You don't need a scourge or a rack to break people. Fear and self-doubt are sufficient. When actual pain comes, the victim's already done the heavy lifting for their torturer. There were no right answers with that devil. He was toying with his food. Us. Perhaps you didn't. See? Sowing doubt is an old trick. Watch out for it. And for Raphael. You're straight to the point, at least. But still, I'm not sure you're ready for Shah's teachings. Not yet, at least. Very well. Perhaps there's potential in you. Let's see how you handle this. I am indeed a disciple of Shah. Mistress of the Night and Lady of Loss. I assume you've heard of her? Well, if that troubles you, perhaps you should fetch the Bailiff to arrest me. Ah, but there's no Bailiff here, is there? Just leagues of wilderness and the dangers lurking within. We're in this together, but I'll happily go it alone. My faith will keep me company. There's no story. None that you're entitled to hear, anyway. Just forget you ever saw it. You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? What, besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? It's a deal. No, I can't. I mean, I literally can't. There's certain things I can't remember right now. Shah's secrets must be preserved above all else. All who worship her know this. I have had certain memories suppressed, voluntarily, so that I can serve Shah without compromising her. 
If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, then my memories will be restored. That is not for you to know. Leave it at that. This devil, Raphael, flaunts his paltry wings as if he wants to impress us. You saw the red dragon slaying his infernal kin above hell's fires, did you not? Next to a dragon, the devil's a gnat. When I am Kithrak, I will take my queen Vlakith his head as a trophy. Githyanki knights, the riders that chase the Nautiloid. They are the commissars and enforcers of my queen Vlakith's will. Vlakith bestows no greater honor. To wield a Kithrak silver sword is my destiny. I will earn my queen's favor, and I will conquer every layer of hell should she command it. The Geich are my kind's mortal enemy. It is not unusual for the Kithrak to give chase, to penetrate the hells. This is unusual. But I'm not one to question the wisdom of my queen. I can see but to the horizon. Vlakith's sight pierces the many plains. Do you feel as flattered as I do? Fight it to die with a devil. Believe me, that was a devil's equivalent of serenades and roses. Don't let his bluster fool you. All that talk of desperation merely illustrates his own. I think he wants something from us, badly. And in that knowledge lies our opportunity. Our souls. But I suspect that's but his opening offer. Let me play the devil's advocate. The man is too eager. Do not dismiss his offer out of hand. If there's one quality all the denizens of the hells embody, it's ambition. A quality they share with many humans, come to think of it. Fine, but my reasoning is this. Fact one. There's something very strange and very powerful about our tadpoles. Fact two, a devil offers to take it away. Devils aren't known to aid mortals out of simple kindness. Whatever Raphael wants, we must be the key to getting it, along with our tadpoles. So, we say for now, we wait. If I'm right, Raphael will seek us out again, and when he does, there's a mighty bargain to be made. Remember his Cormirian rhyme? Down came the claw. Perhaps we should start growing our nails. <laughs> What's so funny? You haven't got some laughing curse, have you? <sighs> I really made it out of Avernus. It's incredible. All right, just keep it down. We're conspicuous enough without your hyena call. This calls for careful footwork. Light on my feet. I need a quick word. Keep that beast away from us, you hear? Me, the beast? Now that's fucking rich. Cut it out. It's worse than... Please, no more. Leave us in peace and we shall leave you in kind. Cut the crap, Anders. I know what you are. Don't let her hurt us. Please, we just want to go home.
there's something in the squint of his eye. You suspect he's lying. Enough! Enough! I'll not play pretend anymore, Karlak. You're going home in pieces if needs must. And you, you'll soon learn what it means to ally yourself with the likes of this garbage. Avernus was never my home. It was my prison. I'm free now. And I'm never going back! I'm never going back. And if any of Mummy's little friends want to pick up where the others left off, they'll find nothing but a pile of ash. That's right, she won't. She can't. She couldn't even lay a finger! <laughs> I ought to do it. Whew. Had to let off a little steam after facing off with those ignots. Granted, the fire's lasting a little longer than it should. How do I look? Careful, soldier. If I burn any hotter, I might explode. Hear that? Infernal engine for a heart. Let's me burn as hot as the hells. Seems to be running in overdrive since I left Avernus. Won't be seeing my mechanic anytime soon, so I'll just make the most of the extra heat. Just don't get too close till I've found a way to calm it down. High pain tolerance and a dynamic duo of truly shitty bosses. But it's a bit early in the game to be getting into tragic backstories. Let's save the Scar show for later, after we've worked up an appetite for tragedy. Meanwhile, I'll need to find someone who can tune up my engine sooner rather than later. Believe me when I say this thing is hot. The first time I faced down those paladins, they let slip there was an infernal mechanic in the area. A tiefling. He might be able to stabilize things, if I can find him. Sounds like a good lead. Hopefully, our guy will be among them. A tune-up would do this old tub a world of good. 
Hey, soldier. The year, ten air. The place, a sleepy little town called Baldur's Gate. Our hero, Karlak, a knock-kneed delinquent from the outer city with everything to give and nothing to lose. I was a kid looking for a way to fill my days and make some cash when I fell into the wrong crowd. Worked for a guy I respected. A lot. Turns out the feeling wasn't mutual. Through the jigs and the reels, he made a deal with Zariel behind my back. You know Zariel, right? Archdevil of Avernus. She put this thing in my chest and set me to work. Well, to war. I learned quick how to stay alive. And the engine served me when it came to killing devils. Ten years of that. The stories I could tell. Guy named Gortash. Politician. Inventor. One of these wheeler dealer types who seems to have a finger in every pie. I guess I was naive to think everything he got up to was above board. What did I know? I saw a job, a good job, with people I liked, doing work I was good at. Sometimes I'm jealous of that girl. Oh, to feel so invincible again. Gives me energy, power. But you've seen it in action. Very hard to control. If I'm excited at all, angry, nervous, delighted, enticed, I burn hot. Hot enough to burn anyone who gets close. Agonizing. God's what I wouldn't give for a hug. A pat, anything. You've never met anyone so desperate for a hug as this one right here. Pathetic, perhaps, but true. It's my lot to bear, and I bear it badly. Ah, oh, well, can't have it all, can you? Not today, at least. Soldier? Depends on the type. Ice devils hate an inferno, but that's an easy one. Orthons love projectiles. What they don't love is getting their bombs lobbed right back in their faces. Demons, on the other hand, every demon is absolutely singular. You can't ever think you've got them typed out. Sharp instincts, sharp weapons, and a knack for improvisation. That's the only way to survive them. <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? First things first, I need to get this engine tuned up. Thing's powerful, but it's been feeling volatile ever since I left the Hells. Can't be too hard to find an infernal mechanic around here, right? We were both part of Zariel's inner circle. Her by choice, me by force. In the grand scheme of things, I'm inconsequential to Zariel. Sure, I've got the engine. But I wasn't even her strongest fighter. But she favored me like a child favors a captive pet. Mizora envied the attention, I suppose. I'm sure when Zariel gave her the order to hunt me down, Mizora was delighted. <sighs> no kidding. The fighting, the chaos, the betrayal. It had the makings of a good stage show, but I did not want to be one of the players. I don't know. You'd think she'd have more important things to do. Devils and their pride. I should speak up. Karlak's temper is a sight to behold. She'll need to be careful. That rage will burn her right out. Karlak's all fire and fury. I pray to the triad it doesn't consume her.
Isn't it glorious? Karlak's fury is a wonder to behold.